What's up, YouTube? Ryan back today with another sports card video. Today, I'm giving you guys my top five, actually six, because I'm giving you guys an honorable mention in today's video of players I think are going to go up during the minor league season this year. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. That's exactly what we're doing today. Originally, it was going to be five. I turned it into six because I just don't like ranking pitchers and hitters at, like in the same videos. So I gave us one pitcher and I gave us five hitters, all prospects, all focusing on players that are going to stay in the minor leagues for the majority of 2022. You know, it would just be too easy to throw in Adley, Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, Riley Green, like Bobby Wood Jr. All these guys are going to debut. All these guys that are hyped up for American National League Rookie of the Years. Like, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to focus on players that are going to stay in the minor leagues. I'm going to give you guys my reasons. I just think a lot of these guys are going to move up the prospect rankings this year. Before we jump in the video, I'm going to try to make it pretty quick today. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think of this five-player list. Good, bad, yay, nay. Are you buying any of these players, selling any of these players? Let me know in the comments below. Let's do it. Player number one. I'm going to be doing a couple things here as we look at this. So this is the 2021 prospect list from the pipeline. I'm using this as a comparison. We're going to compare that to Baseball America's updated 2022 prospect list to see where they've moved up or down. And then I'm going to show you guys either their charts or some, some recent comps of their cards as to why I think they're probably a good little pickup. None of these cards I'm showing today are going to be super expensive also. It's going to be pretty affordable. I'm going to be showing raw and graded prices for pretty much every player. So excited to do that. All right, everyone. We're starting off this video with an honorable mention, and it's going to be a pitcher. We need a pitcher, and it's going to be D.L. Hall. But you know how I am. I don't like ranking pitchers and hitters on the same lists. So we're going to have six total players today. So D.L. Hall, you guys. Last year, 2021 list, he was in the top 100. He was number 72 ranked overall. He got hurt last year. Baseball America has him ranked 50 seconds. So he moved up 20 spots while being injured. That's how good he did when he was playing last year, you guys. This guy was a first-round draft pick back in 2017. And look what he did last year. He, had, he only had seven starts. Again, only seven starts. But it was his first time pitching in double A, And he was lights out. 3.13 ERA. He won all of his starts. He was 2-0. and uh, in 31.2 innings pitched in his first time in double A, struck 56 batters out. So just a ridiculous 15.9 strikeouts per nine. Just crazy. Whip was really strong too, almost under one. Just really solid, like first experience in double A. And then he got hurt, which sucks. And yes, Grayson Rodriguez is the number one guy in this Orioles farm system, but that's why I think I like DL Hall so much more is because he is not really getting the focus of Grayson Rodriguez. Grayson Rodriguez, his cards are pretty expensive. But if we go into his recent comps, and we're just going to show a little bit of everything here, you can pick up his base autograph for $30. You can pick up his base refractor for $2. And again, a lot of this stuff's going to be like inconsistent sales because it's just all pulling from eBay. But like even his green auto, $100, you're going to get his base non-autos for under $10 for the most part. You're going to get his autographs under a hundred dollars pretty much no matter what you want literally is orange 415 dollars it's pretty expensive but for an orange auto hey you never know that's not too bad only 45 dollars for his refractor psa 10 dl hall i think is a really great pitcher and honestly he has this stuff like i watched like i want to say his first three starts last year he has the stuff to be an ace in the major leagues he does he could be better than Grayson Rodriguez when it's all said and done. Plus, he's a lefty, which definitely helps, I think, when it comes to, like, popularity. I don't know. People love lefty pitchers. Nonetheless, I think the Orioles are going to be a really good farm system. And I think I think D.L. Hall is a good, cheap pickup. So, he's my favorite pickup right now as a pitcher. The next guy we're going to talk about, Andy Pajes. Andy Pages. Whatever you want to call him. Andy Pajes, Andy Pages, Andy Pajes. I've heard it a billion different ways, but Andy Pajes, the number 100th minor league prospect, and I don't even think he made this list. He wouldn't even make the top 100 on Baseball America. And honestly, I don't know what a player has to do to make this top 100 sometimes, and this guy, people just don't like him for somewhat, whatever reason. 20 years old last year in high A, so he played with the Great Lakes Loons. Say that 10 times straight. 
20 years old. He played 120 games, played the whole season. This man hit 31 home runs. On top of that, he had 25 doubles. He batted 265 with a 394 on base percentage, 933 OPS. So, like, an extremely solid season as a 20-year-old. Like, stupid. Like, how many 20-year-olds hit 30 home runs in the minor leagues and also get on base a lot? Like, yeah, there's guys that are home run or no run, but, like, he wasn't a home run or no run type player. And I think he's going to be a very good player moving forward. I think next year, if he dominates you guys, and I won't be as optimistic as Giraffe Neck Mark in his recent prospect video. He thinks Paul Hayes can be a top 25 prospect by the end of the year. I think he'd be top 50 for sure. I mean, skill-wise, why not? I love the top 25 pick from Mark. That's just the type of talent he has. His stuff has moved up this year, though. So his stuff came out in 2020 Bowman Chrome, I believe it was. Didn't have any base cards, so only autographs here. And his stuff has gone up in price. So, so this is pretty much at the start of last season. So it looks like five eight and five nine is when these were added to market movers. Pick up his PSA ten for one hundred twenty seven dollars. Most recent sale five hundred twenty five dollars. But his raw stuff's still very affordable. Back in May, you pick up his raw autograph for forty bucks, and most recent sale is at one hundred. So very reasonable pricing still for an autograph. Hundred bucks, like. That's not bad at all. I think if, like, this is $100 for someone that's not even ranked yet. If the scouts start getting behind this player, just, it's going to blow up. His stuff is going to blow up. And since he doesn't have base cards, his autographs are going to demand value. So, Andy Pajes, for me, one of my favorite prospects. Absolutely love him as a as a hitter. He's really athletic, too. He plays decent defense. Like he's literally just, he's not just a bat. So, I love that, too. A lot of times you just see these players that just they go up there swinging for home runs and if they don't hit home runs they're pretty useless no he's a pretty good all-around player but he hits tanks so i like andy pahes a lot he's again he's one of my favorite players to pick up right now i have one of his i have his purple auto right now in a bgs 95 and this is something i'm probably going to look towards a raw card of his just because it is cheaper right now because i already have a pretty nice auto so no i just want to throw it out there i think he definitely deserves to be on the list and I love that he's not ranked really from these scouts still. Like not even the top 100, hitting 31 home runs at a t as 20 year at 20 years old. Like, sign me up. The next player on the list, and again, I didn't say this at the beginning, but this isn't really in an order. These are just five players I think are gonna move up. I try to put them in somewhat of an order, but it's not not super important. Next up, Marco Luciano. Marco Luciano had a pretty disappointing 2021 season. I will say he was the number five prospect in the 2021 list, and he deserved to be there. Now he drops to 17 on Baseball America. And yes, these are different lists. I can't wait for the Pipeline's 2022 list to come out, but on Baseball References, he dropped to 17. But Marco Luciano, you guys, he has all the talent in the world. He's 6'2", 178, and he killed it when he was in low way this year. He hit 278 with a 373 on base percentage, 930 OPS. He had 18 home runs in 70 games. He had, he had 14 doubles on top of that. He just did a little bit of everything and pretty dang well at 19 years old. Like, love to see those numbers. Went up to high and struggled, and that's why his hype has died down a little bit because for those 36 games he was at high A, he was bad. 217 batting average, 283 on base percentage, 577 OPS. He went up there and struck out a lot. 54 strikeouts and 36 at bats. If he corrects that, I definitely see him doing better. And I mean, I'll even say at the beginning of these 70 games, I want to say for the first like 20 games, he was hitting somewhere around here, like maybe a little bit better, but he was, he was a slow start, and then he got comfortable and then like really turned it on. So who knows? Maybe if he had a couple more at-bats at, at high A, he would have figured it out. But that's why he's on this list. If he didn't struggle, he wouldn't be on this list because his stuff would be way too expensive. So his stuff is actually still pretty affordable if we go to his charts here. So I'm focusing on his Mega Box Refractor. We have his base and his raw. His autographs are just really expensive. I think his, his PSA 10 auto goes for like almost $1,000 still. So that's why I don't have it on this list. But these card prices have been pretty consistent over the last year. I uh, Actually, before this, and it doesn't go back that far, I actually bought this card for $180 myself. Um, expecting a bigger year from Luciano. And this is why I actually like him more as a buy now. I wish I would have waited. But as far as PSA 10s go, back in October, you can pick up this card for $118. And you can still pick up this card for $124 right now. Again, I paid 180 for mine, so it's uh, definitely a discount from that, and I still am not even mad at that price that I paid. I think it's going to end up being more than that at some point. Um, as far as his raw goes, $40 back in October, and then 
Right now, you pick it up raw for twenty six eighty eight. Was the most recent sale that was on two days ago, February six. So very inexpensive for Marco Luciano right now. It's a nice card. It's not a super high pop. I mean, that's cheap. It's really cheap. And for the talent of player, like Marco Luciano, if he comes back next year and balls out, he plays well the entire season. Like he's a top five prospect again. Like hundred percent, maybe even top three. So. I mean, I've definitely made the bold decision like a year ago saying he, I thought he was going to be the number one prospect in baseball that has fallen off a little bit, but still really solid. I like Marco Luciano a lot. Talent's there. See if he can figure it out in 2022, but his card prices are pretty cheap. Next up, everyone, we have Noel de Marte. He was number 11 on the pipeline in 2021, and now on Baseball America, they have at number 18. So he dropped a little bit. Because I don't think he did as good as a lot of people wanted him to do. And I've talked about that before. But he's a really good player. And he's young. He's similar to Luciano where he still has some bad on ball issues to figure out. But he's young. Last year in 2021 at 19 years old. He only played in low A for the most part. He played a couple games in high A. I wish he would have played more in high A. Because I just think him and Luciano should have been there most of the season. They just weren't. But over 107 games, 273 batting average, 366 on base percentage, 825 OPS, and he had 17 home runs. So the power's there. He's a middle infielder as well. I think see him more as a second baseman for sure. I think they have him as a shortstop. Yeah, they have him as a shortstop. I think he's going to end up playing second base, which honestly might help him because he has so much power. Like He's probably going to be one of the most powerful second basemen if he does transition to second base. He's, he might stay at shortstop, but he, his defense isn't the best. But no Ave Marte, you know? He is one of those guys that are on the fringe of the top 10, but his stuff is still pretty affordable. We're going to focus on the same card, same year, 2019 Mega Box, just like Luciano. Um, his autographs, again, they're pretty expensive. They're a little bit lower, though. They're a little bit lower than Luciano, a little bit lower than like some of the very top prospects. But as far as the, the Mega Box goes, it's going to be pretty similar to Luciano. So last year, at the start of the season, you could pick up his... PSA 10 for $102 and most recently 130. So it went up just a little bit and is raw $20 to most recent sale of 35. So and those are fluctuating a lot. So like this one sold for 1750 on the 5th. So you can pick up one of those for under $20. Noelve Marte again, I think the talent's there. I think he's right on that fringe of the top 10. If he has a good season, like he might be pushing top Easily top 10, but probably like top five, arguably, if he has a good season this year with his age, his talent, like he could be a top five prospect as well. And that is definitely why he made my list. Next up, and I hate to do this because I don't like talking about D-backs prospects, but Corbin Carroll, everyone, he was number 20 on the pipeline last year and on Baseball America, they have him at 20 still. So he's right, right outside the top 10. This is someone that got hurt all last year. And if we go and look at his stats, he's a special little player. He's done very well, and he did very well his first year. Not a lot of power, but he was showing more power in his second minor league season. 2021, he had two home runs in his first seven games and then got hurt. He was just doing crazy good. If, like, I think if he would have played all year, like he would have a lot more hype on his name, and that's why he's on this list. Again, he got hurt, so his stuff isn't that expensive like, I'm definitely still trying to pick up some more Corbin Carroll stuff myself. He's probably my number one target because I don't really have much of him. I have some raw stuff, but nothing graded. And I definitely want to get some stuff graded. Back in March of 2021, you can pick up this card for $72 and a PSA 10. Most recent, 90 And that's a refractor. PSA 10, everyone. It's not the chrome. It's not the base. It's the PSA 10 refractor. And then raw. They only have this starting in November, but you could pick this up for $10 then and now. I mean, it's just barely outside of that. $17.50 for a refractor. Find a clean refractor, grade it. Some good profits there, you know? And 2019 Bowman, that's some good quality cards, to be honest. But yeah, Corbin Carroll, I just think he's a good prospect. I think if he plays this entire season, stays healthy, top 10. Top 15 at the worst, but he could easily push top 10 if he has, like, what he was doing, if he's able to, I mean, I don't expect him at 435, but like, say he comes out and hits like 320 with like 12 home runs, like shows that he does have power and he's super fast. He's stupid fast. Like in 2019, stole 18 bags, got thrown out once. In 2021, stole three bags, got thrown out once. But he has everything he could possibly need to be a really good leadoff hitter in the major leagues. And he's definitely the best dime back prospect right now. 
Jordan Lawler, hopefully, will push him. But right now, it's Corey McCarroll. And that's why he's on my list. All right, the last guy we're talking about, and this is someone who he got injured, but he was a top 10 prospect last year. This is C.J. Abrams we're talking about, everyone. C.J. Abrams, where do they have him on this list? I'm pretty sure they have him top 10 on here as well. They got him number 9 on Baseball America for 2022. C.J. Abrams is an absolute stud, and I do think he's going to stay down this year. I think we're going to miss one more year of Abrams, unfortunately, because he got injured. He only played 42 games last year at Double A. We might see him like towards the end of the year ne next year, but I don't think we're going to see too much of him. The Padres do tend to bring some people up like... Uh, who was it last year? Marcano Lupacita, or I probably said that wrong, but he got brought up like really early last year. I didn't expect it at all. Who knows? Maybe we will see Abrams next year, but nonetheless, the reason he's on this video is because I do think he's going to spend some time in the minor leagues still because he was working out some kinks in double A in those 42 games he played last year, 296 with a 363 on base percentage, 782 OPS, two home runs only which I actually expected an uptick even in those 42 games because in spring training in like a, what, three weeks, he hit four home runs. And they're all big time opposite field home runs. Like he was showing some power. It was like surprising because he is still a small skinny dude, but he was showing some pop in spring training. So the way I see CJ Abrams right now and his prices are still very affordable. We're going to go the, the base refractor from 2019. PSA 10 back in February of last year, $153, and then spring training hit. Someone bought one for $280. There was a CJ Abrams hype during spring training, you guys. And then his stuff slowly came down, still hovering like $200, $190, $150. And now, most recent sale, come on, $142.50. And even right here on January 16th, $97 for PSA 10 refractor. Like, love that price. And then as far as raw goes, he's affordable. Starting back in October, $33. And right now, I pick up for right around $30. Like, I've seen sales around $25 and $30 myself. So find a good refractor, grade it. There's some good profits there. I really do think C.J. Abrams, like, he could be the number one prospect midseason update. If he comes out, balls out, like, he could be up here after all these players that we expect to drop off, drop off. Like, we expect these top four to drop off. And then it's just Abrams. And if we go from this list, like drop off, drop off, drop off, probably drop off, drop off, probably drop off. Like, I mean, he's going to drop off too. So it's like Moreno, Abrams, like he's probably a top three prospect. So as long as he plays well, he's going to be in that top three. And I think he's just going to demand more, more value. He got hurt, you know? So, but yeah, CJ Abrams, I mean, I don't have favorites, but he's probably my favorite buy just because I think he has... Like, potential to have an extremely long career in the MLB, and his stuff's pretty cheap right now. I think he's just a good hitter. So, I mean, if I have to use the word favorite, CJ Abrams is probably my favorite right now. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for today's video. Those are my five hitters and one pitcher. Like, I originally left out Noelve Marte, and I'm like, no, he needs to be in this video. So, we got six players in this video, so... Yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think of this list. Are you buying any of these players? Are you selling any of these players? Are any of these players just like, no, Ryan? Like, these guys are not as good as you think. Let me know. Give me your honest opinion in the comments below. All right, everyone. You have a great rest of your day. See ya.